Okay, let's practice naming alkanes with uh, complex substituents. Um, so here I'm giving you an alkane. Let's find the longest chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 carbons is the longest chain. So we're going to name this as a no name. The first substituent is encounter here a carbon 2, carbon 1, 2. And it's going to be a 2-methyl. And I'm sure both the skeletal structure at the top and then with some of the bonds drawn out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have at 4 a complex substituent. Okay, so we need to name that complex substituent and then include that in the name. So if we look at the substituent, it's this piece right here. So we're going to start numbering the carbons on the substituent from the first carbon that's bonded to the parent, which would be this carbon, 1. Um, and if you go in either direction, you find a second carbon, a methyl. So that complex substituent, we're going to name it as an ethyl, not an ethane because it's still a substituent. Off of carbon 1, there is a methyl, so we're going to have a 1-methyl. So that substituent is going to be a 1-methyl-ethyl. Okay. Two carbons, that's the longest chain of the substituent, and then on the substituent there is a methyl substituent at carbon 1. You could call that carbon 1' prime and 2' prime if you want, but remember to include the name as without the primes. So this would be 1-methyl-ethyl, and we're going to take that name and put it into um, the total, the full name here. So now we're ready to write the full name. Um, so first we're going to list our substituents. And we're going to list them in alphabetical order. So our substituents are going to be um, a 2-methyl and a 4-1-methyl-ethyl. So we have methyl and ethyl, uh, excuse me, we have methyl versus methyl. So we're just going to list them but based on the name. But the complex substituent is actually going to be 4 dash, open parentheses, 1 methyl ethyl. <clears throat> so our full name, we don't need this anymore, is going to be 2 methyl 4 open parentheses, 1 methyl ethyl, close the parentheses because that is the full name of that complex substituent. We don't have any more substituents, uh, so we're ready for the parent, which is a no name. And again, I'm listing the methyl substituent before the methyl ethyl substituent because they both start with M, methyl. So I'm going to list the second substituent before the substituent that comes at carbon 4. So that is the IUPAC name there. 2-methyl-4-1-methyl-ethyl-nonate. Now if you look at this molecule, that complex substituent, it's actually an isopropyl. So rather than calling the complex substituent 1-methyl-ethyl, I could call it isopropyl. That is the common name. So I can use the common name um, and list a 2-methyl and a 4-isopropyl. That's going to change the order of the substituents because I comes before M in the alphabet. So I could also call this molecule 4-isopropyl dash 2-methyl. I've listed all of my substituents so no name. No parentheses needed when I use the common name. So both of these names would be acceptable. Again, the isopropyl comes before the methyl, just because I comes before M. Up here we have methyl and methyl, um, so we go by the order of the locants. So let's do a second example.
Okay, so in this example, again, we're going to look um, for the longest chain. And the longest chain here is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 um, carbons for a decade. And I'm going to start numbering at this end, 1, 2, because I encounter a substituent right away at carbon 2. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So I have a complex substituent here at carbon 5. I have a 2-methyl, which is not a complex substituent. And then I have a 5-something, right? a complex substituent. So let's figure out what that is. And here it is drawn out if you need to see it a little bit better. So if I start numbering the carbons of the substituent, at the first carbon that bonds to the main chain, that would give me 1, 2, 3. It's going to be named as a propyl. And it's going to be named as a propyl with a 2-methyl. There's a methyl there, a carbon 2. So it's going to be a 2-methyl propyl. That's what's going to go into there, into that name. So that's all of my substituents. I cannot put the full name together. So I'm looking here at a 5-2-methylpropyl and at a 2-methyl. So I'm going to list the 2-methyl first because uh, they both start with a methyl. So 2-methyl. That's my uh, first substituent I'm going to list. Now I have a complex substituent at carbon 5, so I'm going to put the locant of the whole substituent, 5, and then I'm going to open a parenthesis and give the name of the substituent in there. That's going to be a 2-methylpropyl. Close the parentheses because I finished naming the complex substituents. I don't have any more substituents, so I'm ready for the parent name, which is decane. So I have a 2 methyl 5 um, 2 methyl propyl decane. Um, if you know the name of this complex substituent, you can use it, right? It's isobutyl. So you could put this name in here. It would be 5-isobutyl. Uh, I would come before methyl. So um, I would list it as 5-isobutyl 2-methyl decade. And either one of those names would be correct. 